Hello and welcome back to the Willie Morgan Show with Manchester United icon, Willie Morgan. Uh, just a few things to talk about this week, which I'm sure we'll get to. But as always, Willie, how are you? Oh, not too bad. Uh, golf's good. Uh, very important, as you well know. <laughs> All you people out there, very important. But no, I'm hitting the ball well. It's, uh, and my wife Kate has started to play again. So we've been going to the driving range. And also two best friends, John and Vincent. Uh, Vincent's got the bug badly. Uh, he's there every day hitting 150 balls <laughs> in the driving range. Got a new set of clubs. No, it's really, uh, it's been really good. In a way, apart from a couple of days, not been too bad here. So other than, you know, all the rubbish going on with uh, <laughs> Ronaldo and everything else. Other than that, no, all good. Oh, no, it's not. My grandson, COVID again. He just got over it, Alex. So we've just been to see him and uh, he's he's okay. It's all gone, but uh, he was pretty rough with it. So anyway, other than that, all good, I think. Well, you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned Ronaldo. Um, he certainly cast some storm clouds over Old Trafford. He said that he feels betrayed by the coach. He feels that the coach has been winding him up since the summer. Um, he feels that he shouldn't have been asked to play for three minutes against Tottenham because he's better than that. And then when he was challenged by the reporters at the World Cup just yesterday, he said, I can speak when I want. I am bulletproof as far as Manchester United are concerned. Really? Does that include machine guns? <laughs> it's diabolical. It's diabolical. It's still there. Well, you know, we, you know, we spoke about this you and I, what over the last two or three months, in every podcast, the first time it was brought up by his agent. Oh, he's not sure where he was. Overnight gone. He should have been gone. And he's still there, harping on and harping on and harping on. And well, we all know the reason that he hasn't gone. It's because nobody wants him. Uh, it's crazy. And what he said, what he's come on and said, is disgusting. He's diabolical. If you've got something to say to the co coach, go and say it to him personally. How about, you know, go sit down with him. You don't go public and, and do it like that. You just don't. Anyway, here's what he is. Um, it'll be interesting to see what United do. Um I think it's sad. You know, he's, he, he's been a great player, great goal scorer. Uh, and it's sad that it would even come to this. you got to have some dignity, some decorum. And obviously he doesn't. So you can't blame the uh, coach. He's no different from every other coach. Um, it's just very sad. It's sad for him. It's sad for Man United. And it's sad for the fans because he's disrupting everything the way he's acting and getting away with it or would appear to be getting away with it. Um, it and it's sad. He shouldn't be like, you know, I should be above that. He's had a great career. He's made a fortune. Hey, have some class. Don't degenerate into fifth class by, by doing what you did. And to, obviously, and to Piers Morgan, mind you, <laughs> from disliking him greatly, I I don't mind the guy. At least he tells he speaks the, as far as he's concerned the truth. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I think the next move is Man United. You would think they will terminate his contract because of what he's done. They'll have where they have grounds to do that so he doesn't get any compensation. No doubt the lawyers are looking into it at the moment. Uh, but then where does he go? America? That's probably the only the only place left for him is in, in the States. And I say, great player, but have some class. One of the things that Ian Wright said which interested me was he feels that Ronaldo looks like a player that's struggling 
to come to terms with the fact his career's coming to an end. Do you think that's part of the reason for this outburst? Oh, without a doubt. He knows he's not what he was, obviously. You know, what is he, 36, 37? 37 turns 38 this year. He's in great. You know, it's a fantastic career. Um, but it's difficult for any player, no matter who you are, to accept, hmm, not maybe what I was. <laughs> you know, your, your mind tells you you are, and you can still do everything that you did when you were 20, 25. You can't, because your body doesn't let you. Uh, so you compensate by being petulant, and he certainly got that in space. Um, and it's sad. I, I keep saying it's sad. I mean, I, I, I like the guy. What he's done in, in football has been fantastic. But have class. Have class. And bow out in glory and not not like this. It, it's, it's not very nice. Not very nice. For everyone, including him. Uh, I hope they resolve it one way or another. Um, well, he ain't going to apologise because he's done it now. And um, so the only thing that will be in abeyance is whether the United lawyers, if he broke any conditions in his contract by saying what he said and doing what he's done, so they can terminate it without giving him anything. Uh, we'll see. You know, it's it's great. He's lucky he's had the World Cup come up to <laughs> deflect from everything. Um, and that's been interesting so far. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, in, term, we'll, in terms of Ronaldo, Willie, um, two things I want to ask you about in particular that he, that he said. Uh, the first one being the three minutes he was asked to go on for against Tottenham. He said was disrespectful to him, um, that he shouldn't have been asked to go on for three minutes um, when the team was already winning. As a player who was highly regarded when you played at United, you wore that number seven jersey. Do you understand why he was frustrated at being asked to do that? Well, of course. You know, the, one of the things that was discussed when he, when he walked away, the, the game before when he walked, you know, went up the tunnel and went away. And, you know, I'd, we, obviously people chatting about it, say, oh, it's dreadful, it's this. I did the same myself. I did the same myself. Uh, so I understand the frustration. Uh, not that I've been going on for t three minutes. That never happened. But the first time I ever got taken off, and it was purely because Doherty and I, it, it was an open sore. It opened up and it was in, in the public. And he was making a point uh, to me. And he took me off, uh, I don't know, about 20 minutes before the end at Old Trafford. And I, apart from being astonished, couldn't believe it, I got to the touchline, went up. I didn't even have a shower. I just put my clothes on and went home. <laughs> that was it. Because I was upset. So I can understand that without a doubt. That we weren't getting paid five hundred grand a week. Uh, I'll play three minutes for five hundred grand a week. I'll be delighted to play three minutes every week, <laughs> every game. If that's what you want, I, I don't know. I, I do understand what he's saying. By the way, obviously, he's a great player in a different league to everything else there. Completely different league, and to treat him. Um, Bring him on for three minutes. Well, it, but you know my thoughts on coaches. That's a coach. That's a coach. Being, you know, if you if you want to show your authority, get rid of him. He should have been, he should have gone. That's it. Back in January, he should have been gone. So, it. Uh, I, get, I understand what he's done and I understand why he's done it. But it's not it's not a nice way to finish a, career, a, a great career. Absolutely great career. You know, you don't need to do that. 
the, the other thing, that, pardon me, <clears throat> that he said um, in the interview, um, which I, I found intriguing, was when he talked about being close to joining Man City, but it was Alec Ferguson that brought him back to the club, essentially. He said if he didn't speak to Ferguson, then he probably would have joined Man City. Is that another example of how Ferguson undermined Solskjaer when he was at the club? Well, of course he did. And by the way, it's got nothing to do with him. We spoke about this before. Watch the games, Alex. Keep your nose out. Got nothing to do with you. And by the way, he, he persuaded him to come to United. Who sold him? Tell him, do you remember <laughs> who sold him? Oh, you listen, think, do you remember who sold him? The I think it may have been Alec. <laughs> yeah, it may have been Alec. Well, why'd you sell him in the first place? You know, it's... No, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is highest. And he shouldn't have been involved anyway, at all. I love I wish he had gone to City. <laughs> we wouldn't have all this problem. <laughs> and they'd be having the problems. <laughs> so he, he'll go, he'll go one way or another. He'll either go right away if they terminate his contract, obviously. Or I think his contract's finished in summer, isn't he? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And he'll his agent will be scouring the world, trying to find somewhere to keep face uh, that matters, and he won't. He'll end up. It'll be China or or America, and he'll be all right there. You know, he'll be all right playing there for a, for a while, get a couple of more years, uh, and good luck to him. You know, good luck to him. You can't knock what he's done as a goal scorer. He's been fantastic. But it's nice to have a bit of class, I keep saying. <laughs> before, terrible. before we uh, move on to talk about the current World Cup, um, you've mm -hmm. been involved in the competition in the past. Um, mm -hmm. what, what's that like? Obviously, you, you played a big part in Scotland qualifying, but in terms of the build-up to the tournament itself, just, just what is it like? Well, the the build up for me was was bad because I I joined the squad at the end of the season with a as, as we said a really really bad groin injury I could hardly walk so for the first two weeks all I did was get treatment so I wasn't involved in the build up I wasn't involved in training I wasn't involved in the early matches um, and it was only after the play of Zaire that I I was still wasn't fully fit. Uh, probably about 70% fit, but, you know, brought me back and put me in the team. Um, so the build-up for me was frustrating because I shouldn't have gone, but, you know, it's an opportunity. Who want, who doesn't want to go to the World Cup, play for the country? Um, but the injury, I, I, I say, that I carried, I'd been carrying for, for two or three months, and getting injections and getting, you know, strapped up, put me out, get a crutches, and just, just play as best you can. But it took its toll and it really hard. I could hardly, I could hardly walk. Um, so it was, it was a little bit, but for all the other players, I mean, you've got the World Cup, you've got the biggest show on the planet. Uh, it's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, at the end of it for me, obviously, the, the second last match, we played Brazil. And at that time, you don't forget, it's 70, I think 74, a long time ago, was, they said, watched by over a billion people worldwide, which was <laughs> mind-boggling, you know. Didn't know there was a billion people on the planet then. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I mean, for all the players, anyone taking part, it, it's great you're playing for your country in the biggest stage biggest stage in the world there's nothing better there is nothing better no matter what you've done as a club player there's nothing it's, it's the pinnacle of any footballer's life so yeah I was privileged and, and lucky and everything else just to be part of the Scotland team 74 how did you keep yourselves entertained? Because normally when an internet, you know yourself, and so the listeners, when you go with your national team, you're normally away for maybe a week at most. You maybe get one game, maybe two. Whereas when it's a tournament, you are together for quite a few weeks. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, easy. He drank a lot of bottles of wine and <laughs> uh, played cards and, and ate. ate everything that was put on the table. We really did. That's what we did. Because it is between matches, it's boring. There's not a lot to do. We even, and while we were in Germany, we even tried to get a little bit of sunbathing in because the weather was nice as well, even though you weren't allowed. We should sit at the window with the windows open. <laughs> I know. But as far as the Scotland team was concerned, they did. We should come back from training, go in, <laughs> get the wine. It was all, obviously, all available. And we made good use of it, as you do. Uh, it was all lead from meals, I think, at that time in Germany. I can't remember. I think it was lead from meals. And Green Label. I'm trying to think of the gym the gym, uh, that we drank. Anyway, that's how we passed the time, Callum. It is boring. And playing cards. We play cards non-stop. We always play cards. In terms of playing cards, who was the king of the card school? Ah, oh, everybody had their, uh, everyone had their, their chances. We played a game called Hearts, which was, I mean, amongst others, you know, you're playing obviously Bragg and Pontoon and, uh, but there's a game called Hearts where the, the, the object of the game is not to take Hearts because they count at the end of the, you know. Um, and no, everyone was pretty efficient. You know, there wasn't anyone particularly great. Uh, we were all pretty efficient at it, and there was no there was no fights. Let's put it that way. There was, <laughs> there was no barroom brawls. Well, that's the main thing. Um, in terms of this World Cup, um, so far we've seen um, a few teams play. We've seen Argentina play. We've seen the, the Dutch play. We saw England play. Um, a few other games, Denmark as well today. Um, what have you made of it so far in the games that you've watched? Of course, England winning 6-2, I suppose, is the, the big story at this moment. Big story. We can beat Iran. There's only three, two of us, isn't there? <laughs> what I want to know is how did they manage to score two goals against England? And I've got to be quiet here. You, you know my family are going to kill me. If I say anything bad about England, Callum, I can't because all my family support them. Um, and my friends, never mind my family, and all my friends. So actually, it's good, you know, it's, it's good for the country. Um, I just hope that when they come up against. So, did they play for. Is there any league in Iran? Did they play for. <laughs> I wonder where they got the players from. <laughs> they didn't look very good. Uh, but there's, you know, you look at the right across all of them, every country. You know, the sad thing about every country, they've all got coaches now. They're all the same. Anyone can win it. I mean, Saudi Arabia, hello. <laughs> How can they possibly be Argentina? But that tells you the state of the game. And again, because of coaches, just all play the same way. And I, uh, I mean, Wales and USA, it, they just all want to keep possession. Um, and of course, Holland didn't look too clever, did they? No, they really didn't. I, th I thought they were a 2 0 victory, didn't sum up the way that game went. It was very poor. I know, but that's the way. So, I mean, trying to, I mean, and again, I have no idea what the Brazilian team is like. I haven't seen them play. I don't, apart from Neymar, I don't think I could tell you another player. I've got quite a few of the Premier League players. Uh, obviously, they've got Casemiro, they've got your best friend Fred playing for them in midfield. Say no more, they won't win. <laughs> So you'll be looking at some somebody unusual. I don't know. I think it's going to be an unusual team that you wouldn't expect to win it. We'll win it this year. Just because of the state the game's in. Uh, I mean, apart from the build-up of people going there and 
who doesn't want to go there? Who shouldn't be there? Why is he there? It's crazy. It's crazy, the, uh, the build-up to this World Cup. Um, all you got to do is ask FIFA. Hopefully they can check all the FIFA directors' bank accounts and find out. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's one of those where it is an interesting one. Um, every single stadium had to be built, obviously, from scratch. Um when the bid went in, there was no functioning stadiums ready. Whereas normally, if, if, for instance, if England, where you obviously live, or Scotland, where I'm based, if, if you are bidding for a tournament, you've at least got maybe Celtic Park, Ibrox, Hamden, down south, you've got plenty of stadiums. Whereas for this yeah. bid, there, there wasn't a single one ready. I know, but the stadiums look amazing. They do, they've done a good job in the that regard. Look, apart from that big hole outside that one. That they found the other, they, but the stadiums do look amazing. The surfaces are fantastic. I mean, they, you got to hand it to them. They they said they would build them, and they have. Um, it the controversy is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You know all all this stuff about wearing this or not doing that. Or... FIFA shouldn't have gone there in the first place if they didn't want this controversy. Why did they go there? Why? They know what it's going to be like. And, and for me, if you know what the laws are in any country and you don't like them, would you go? Fair point. Would go to that, I would go to that country. If the laws were something I'd like to do, and the laws say, no, you can't, or you go to jail, or whatever they're going to do. Well, I wouldn't go to that country in the first place. I would take a chance. Why did fear? Just money. Just money. Sadly, it, purely money, nothing else. Uh, so FIFA have a lot to answer for. I saw the, uh, the Italian head of FIFA, forgot his name. It is forget. Gianni Infantino. Yeah, Gianni, okay. Um, he, he was on doing an interview and he spoke the biggest load of garbage, not a man. Unbelievable. Diabolical. But they've got away with it. Uh, the question is why? Don't blame everyone else. You know, they're slagging Becky and they're slagging all sorts of people. FIFA are the people who put everybody there. All the countries, all the all the commentators, all the ambassadors. Mm, uh, you have to look at them. That's where the book stops at FIFA. So, as I said, it'd be nice to do a forensic uh, insight into all the personal bank accounts in the Bahamas or wherever it is they have. Well, well just to encourage you, some of our listeners, there is a documentary on Netflix at the moment called FIFA Uncovered which looks at how the World Cup was awarded. I've watched it, I have to say, it's a good watch. And as you say, Willie, some of the revelations of um, who was maybe paid what or who was offered the, uh, this, that or the other is, is particularly interesting. So if you, you want an interesting watch, I would recommend that one. I will. I will watch it. Uh, I haven't seen it, but, you know, it's not rocket science. You don't have to be Einstein to work out <laughs> why the World Cup went to Qatar. <laughs> Hello. Mm. Pretty simple. Well, um, I have to say, in terms of the, in terms of the football, um, I backed um, Argentina. Well, I, I didn't back them as such uh, with money or anything. But I, when people asked me who I thought would win, I was quite confident <laughs> that Argentina might win and Messi would do it. And then you yeah. see that result today. I know, I know. But you know, the only, all the teams are pretty much the same. They're all coached. They're all the same. They all play the same way. And the only exceptional, because he's the greatest player on the planet, is Messi. And as I said before, as great as he is, he still needs people around him. He can't do it on his own. You know, he can't defend. He can't play in goals, play centre-half, play midfield, play up front. He can't cross the ball and head it in himself. He needs people with him. And again, you come back to people who are playing with clubs that are being coached. And they're just all, they're all playing the same way. He's the only, and I thought maybe the fact that he's so different, and you can't defend against Lionel Messi, I don't care who you are. Uh, 
but he has to get the ball first. Yeah. You're no good if you get, haven't got the ball. Uh, so, I, I I mean, if I had to pick one, be, I think Argentina would be my pick. Uh, without knowing other than Lionel Messi, who's in the team, just because of him. But after today, Saudi Arabia, and again, I didn't know they had a football team. <laughs> Did they have any players that play anywhere else other than Saudi Arabia? Do you know, Do you know that's, a, that's a good point. Um, I'm not 100% sure um, if they play across Europe or if they play... I know they've got a league. Um, I do know that. It's not particularly high profile, obviously, but um, I'm not actually sure if they've got a lot of players in Europe because I have to say um, I was watching a lot of them for the first time today, you know, that I was I was learning names that I hadn't been aware of. <laughs> Difficult, though. <laughs> <laughs> Difficult. I hate to be a commentator. <laughs> um... It, it's a fantastic result. At the end of the day, all you can do is take your heart up to them. Um, but like I said, anyone can beat anyone. Like Brentford. Is Brentford playing the World Cup? <laughs> you could bet them. You know, the company beat Man City. Brentford. That tells you everything. And Man City is the best team in the league. They're not the great team, but they're the best team. But Brentford come and beat them at home. So obviously, it, anyone, it could be anyone. A little bit of luck. I mean, in fairness to England, that referee, that first corner, if that's not a penalty, <laughs> what's a penalty? <laughs> it's crazy. In fact, there was two penalties. There were two players wrestled to the game. I mean, it's not like a, a little nudge. He's got his... It's ridiculous the referee played on. So if you're going to get that sort of luck, uh, then you you know you've got a chance. Uh, because it's not going to be great football that will win it. It'll be someone who, you know, has has the luck. In, but in this week, in terms of the questions, we've only got um, three questions this week, which is good. Um, the first one is about Ronaldo. There's a shock. Um, mm. Chris asks, if you were a manager, Willie, would you want a player like Ronaldo in your team? Uh, if I was a manager, Ronaldo now, Chris, no. No, he's high maintenance and he's not going to do nothing. Unless he gets... All the ammunition from every all the other players. He's not going to do nothing. Uh, Ronaldo, when he was like 25, 20, 20, yeah, of course, scores goals, a goal scorer. But I'd have people in my team. Don't forget, I wouldn't be a coach, Chris. I'd be a manager. I'd have two proper wingers who go to the byline. And Ronaldo would score 100 goals a season. Uh, you know. Um, but now, I don't want him at the club. He's cancerous at the club because he's murdering the people that are the coach. Murdering because he's taking away all his authority. Because if he can get away with it, every other player at the club will be, hey, what if he can do that, I'll do that. Why shouldn't I do that? Um, so it's undermining his authority. Uh, so no, I wouldn't... Uh, not, unless, I, unless it was still managers... As a manager, I would bring him there because I've got two wingers who are noble provided, even at his age now, it wouldn't make any difference. As long as he's getting the ammunition, uh, uh, stay in the, the opponent's 18-yard box, I'd find him if he came back over the halfway line. As a <laughs> stay up front. But the way the game's played now, it's hard for him. You know, he's playing in a <laughs> very average team. Very average. So his chances are few and far between. So, and I feel sorry for him for that. And as I've said before, yes, I understand how he feels. I understand why he's done what he's done both times when he walked out and obviously coming on for three minutes is not not very nice thing to do. Uh, so, yeah, I understand all that. If it was still managers and I was a manager... Yes. If he'd ever said, 
I'm not sure where I want to play for Man United. He wouldn't have touched the ground. He had been gone in the morning. <laughs> the second one is similarly from Michael. It's on Ronaldo as well. Where would you go next if you were in Ronaldo's shoes? Uh, anyone would take me, Mike. The, the, prob- the reason is, I spoke about this before, the reason he's still here, but nobody wants him. Or he'd been gone. His agent is scouring, I'm telling you right now, his agent is scouring the world, looking for someone to take him. Someone with credibility. Um, I mean, he, he's not He's not going to be winning any more European Cups with anyone. That's gone. So all he'll want to do, oh, I think all he'll be doing now is America, China, get paid a few million, uh, take the money, get it in the bank, and retire gracefully. I would like that. I would like that for him. You know, he's not a bad lad at all. He's been made out to be a villain. He's not a villain. It's he's in a difficult position, but you can't act like he's doing. So it's a double-edged sword. The last question is from um, David, and this is one that I, I think Willie's already answered, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, if Messi doesn't win the World Cup, is he still a better player than Maradona? Oh, David, it's not even a question. He's in a different league to Maradona. Messi, there's only one player that's ever been on the planet that compares with Messi. And and we spoke about this before. Pelé was the great... Pelé was in a different world to Maradona as a player. Uh, Apart from the fact Maradona was better with with his arms... And, he, and his hands that scored. No, he was good at that. I mean, Kelly wasn't too clever at that, right enough, in fairness. Now, Messi in a different league. Absolutely different league. I just wish we had got him at Old Trafford. So, and I do. Uh, I would go back and watch again. <laughs> I'd pay to go back and watch if he was playing. He's a genius. He is truly, truly a great player. And much better than Maradona. Well, you can't say that the great man doesn't answer the questions honestly. There you go, David. Um, get your questions in, of course, for future shows. But just before we go, Willie, your message to the listeners? Yeah, as always. I mean, enjoy the World Cup best you can. Take care of yourself. Uh, hopefully Donald Trump won't get back in. <laughs> and may, may your God go with you. <laughs> well, there you go. Until next time, see you later. <laughs>